Honorable friends, tonight, by the grace of God Almighty, I want us to deliberate on Romans chapter 8. It talks about the carnal mind, the carnal mind. And Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 1, says, There is therefore no, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit listen to this Romans 8 verse 6 for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So each and every one of us got to check ourselves and find out if we're walking after the to fulfill the loss of the flesh or we want to develop spiritually into that new man of God. Because the, spirit, the things of the flesh are temporary, transient. They pass away very fast. The people of Haiti knew that. They had nothing last January 12th when the great earthquake came and destroyed the city and took quarter of a million lives instantly, young and old, the sucking and the breast. The people of Japan knew that March 11th, 2011, when the great earthquake and tsunami came and destroyed a large part of the country, taking approximately 30,000 lives with them that affluent society teaching that before God all are equal whether rich or poor bond or free right they were rich the people of Japan had their cars their boats and everything and 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 they all died together like one whether they were rich or poor these things of the flesh do perish but the things those that die in Christ shall live again right so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you live it, if you if you just live in to fulfill the loss of your flesh, whether it be sexual, financial, educational, or whatsoever, it shall perish, friend. Those things are good to have money also, and to have your body in good health. But that's just that, that's the minor part. That's a part of it. But overall and all, the most important thing is to walk after the spirit. To be spiritual in Christ. But the, the, the writer says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Listen what he says. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. None of his. This is not casual, friend. You can't do nothing without the spirit of Christ within you. Even in, in uh, I think it's Zechariah 4 verse, um, verse 6, he says, no, not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. We need the Spirit of God in our lives more than anything else. Right? More than anything else, we need the Holy Spirit of Christ in our life. Right? More than just commandment keeping. More than just going to church. More than just uh, a knowledge of God. Without the Spirit of Christ, Jesus says we are none of His. And it's for each and every one of us to check ourselves to see whether or not we have the Spirit of Christ within us. And Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 tells us how the Spirit is manifested in a man. It's not just by saying, I have the Spirit. That makes a difference. But the Spirit must be manifested in your life, in your uh, association, in the way you interact, relate to your environment, to other people, to the animals, to everything. That's what, that's what will show if you have the Spirit of God in you. Not just by what you say, right? Because Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, 
peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with, a, with the affections and lust. So the Bible explains itself and it backs up itself. One takes up and another, right? We have to crucify the lust of the flesh. So if you are living in adultery and fornication and you are living after uh, just self-praise and, uh, and, and so forth, then you have not crucified the flesh yet. Paul says to, to, to the Galatians, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So the spirit of God is not to say, walla 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 walla, yellow on the green on the blue and the green, to say that you have the spirit of God within you. That's not it. It's your life that will testify if the spirit of God is within you. And that's how it will show. Not by just saying, I am filled. Nonsense. Nonsense. Let us continue. Right, from verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness because of righteousness but if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you friend there is no need no excuse to live in sin when you are born again you become you hate sin right you hate sin you hate everything that's evil and you're pressing on towards the mark of the prize of the higher calling in Christ Jesus. You won't be perfect, but you won't be contented living in sin and living a mediocre Christian life. You must go from glory to glory. Character development is a continuous process. Developing from glory to glory, being changed every day from, the, the, from what you are to become a better person in Jesus. But if you Tell yourself that it's all right to be dabbling in sin now and then. Then that's what you're going to be contented with. And God can't work with you. Because he said, be holy, for I am holy. It's not a half-heartedness God is talking about. He said, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, he shall die. But if he through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, he shall live. We are talking about eternal life, friend. Why would you want to give up your eternal life for a little bit of filth? Temporary thing. A little bit of loss. A little bit of flesh. A little bit of sex. A little bit of drugs. A little bit of robbery. A little bit of uh, temporal things. Whatever it may be. To exchange it. You don't know when you're going to die. Maybe now. It may be tomorrow. That's why the, uh, Paul said to the Corinthians, Behold, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If there is anything else we need today, right now, friend, is a double portion of the Spirit of God dwelling in us. Right? Transforming us, quickening our minds. To be on holy ground with God. For he have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But he have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry Abba Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. And if children then hears. Hears of God. And joint hears with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may be glorified together with him. May God bless your friend, right? As we fellowship together and press on together in the mind and spirit of God. Let us crucify the carnal mind by the spirit of God and live and die in the spirit of God so that we may have part in the first resurrection when Jesus comes. No excuse, friend, because we can be changed from glory to glory by the spirit of God on a daily basis. God bless you.